Okay, so we will be creating um, a geometric op art uh, piece of art for your second op art um, original piece of art. Um, this tutorial that you'll see is based on the tutorial that I already posted. I'm just going to simplify it a little bit and use op art brushes instead of just a circle. And this is how I have taken this one and, and kind of recreated it. So it is a little different than the one that you have watched in class. And then we'll put them on four just like we did um, earlier. So if you want to create something similar to this, you want to go to File, New. And we don't want one by one inch. We want 10 by 10. Oops. 300 RGB. Um, I would fill your background contents white for this one, just so you already have it filled white and it's done. Okay, so we have this. Um, we also now need to create another new document. We need to create a smaller document. Um, you can create a quarter of an inch, a half inch, or a one inch. Um, one inch is going to be larger, obviously. The other ones are going to be smaller. You can change them around if you want to. Um, I'm going to do a half inch for this one. Filled white again. And then I'm going to go into my brushes. And I'm going to choose an op art brush that I have downloaded. And I'm going to pick this one. Now it is too big. I don't really like that one. We'll use this one. Um, so I need to, to make it smaller. You can always make it smaller and then um, resize it. This one's good. We'll leave it at this size. If you want to make sure to resize it, I always create a new layer. Make sure black is your top. Click Command T to resize. So it fills my square a little bit more. Now I'm going to Command E. So I have one layer. Select all. Go down here. We want to define pattern. And you can name it whatever you want. I don't name my patterns. Press OK. And then we need to go back to our square document. Double click and unlock it. Double click again to open up your layer styles, and I'm going to do a pattern overlay. Now I don't want the bubbles, I want my pattern that I just made. So I have this lovely pattern right here. Um, this is a really good size, I don't think I need to adjust it any, so you could, um, we could make it larger, but it blurs it. Um, with these brushes it kind of blurs it a little bit, I think. Um, if you go bigger, smaller, not so much. Um, I would prefer going back in and resizing it. So I'm going to keep it right about here. I'm going to press OK. Um, I need to make sure that my channels are open, um, which they are not. So I'm going to go up to my window and I want channels open. So we have our channels. I'm going to move this over here. This is very important. We're going to select this, which ironically, it chooses the white and since I have this white in the background I don't want to fill that. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to select inverse which is different than the tutorial that you had. You guys had a black fill and then um, and then they filled white. Um, I'm going to fill black. Okay then I'm going to deselect and I'm going to drag my effects to the trash and I have this. So now I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to put my grid in here, halfway, five, five. Create my circle here. And sorry, I'm going to hold, if I hold um, option and start in the center it will pull that out which he held shift in his but option works in ours so I'm going to go all the way out to the corner and now I have the whole circle done 
Um, very easy, very simple. You do not have to go all the way to the edges. You could do a smaller one if you wanted to. So it is option, and then you can start from the middle and pull your circle out. Option is the shortcut for that. So then I'm going to go up to filter, and I'm going to distort, and I'm going to spherize it. And I'm going to press OK. And I'm also going to save this selection. That is very important. Saving selections can save you a lot of time. Um, I'm going to save it as circle. Okay. So I have this. Um, now I can do another one. I could modify this circle. I could make it smaller if I wanted to, if I wanted to leave some of that in there, which I'm actually going to do. I'm going to contract it, and I'm going to contract it like 500 pixels. Oh, I guess I'm going to contract it 100. But I'm going to contract it. I'm just going to contract it again until it gets to where I want. One more. Now, you do not have to contract it, obviously. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. I'm also going to save this selection just to be on the safe side if I want to do something funky with it. Circle 2. So now I have 2 there. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to distort and I'm going to twirl it. I'm going to up that twirl quite a bit. I'm zoom this out so I can kind of see what it's going to do. And now I have that. And then I can do another one if I wanted to. I can do another distort. I can go in here and do it opposite so it's pinched. See what that looks like. I can always undo it. I like it. We're going to deselect. I have my op art done. Um, now I can fill in my background. Um, I can do just the circle of color, the background of color. So I'm going to um, click on this selection. See how I just clicked over here and then I clicked on select that and then I can click over here. So now it on my layer, so now I can see it. So I'm going to fill, I'm going to create a new layer and drag that down here. And I'm going to do a gradient behind that. I'm actually going to do a custom gradient here. Um, I want I want a purple. And I want a blue. Press OK. Go over here. Do a blue. Press OK. Whoops, over here. Press OK. Start from my center. Pull out to my corner. Okay, I like that. Now I'm going to select inverse. And I'm going to pull this way. See what that does. Nope, I don't like that. Command Z. Go all the way to the center. See what that does. I don't like that either. I'm going to hit reverse. And I'm just going to pull out like that. I like that. Now I can do some different things. I could open up my levels and change my levels around if I wanted to change that. Um, um, Command H hides it. I can undo that. Go back to here. Select. And inverse. I also hid my guides. I could, I could have my guides back too. I'm going to deselect, so now I have this. Um, we also um, can do like a border around that. So I'm going to switch back to here and do a rectangular marquee tool. Um, he selected all, and then he um, selected the transform selection. And again, instead of holding shift like he did, if you hold option, it will pull them in correctly. See how that pulled it in all at once so you don't have to go to all four sides. Um, hit enter to do that. Save the selection. 
I save it as box. And then you option click on your circle. Oops, or not. So now you have your box selected and now we want to subtract the circle from it. So we option command click and now we have this. Now you can do a command L where you adjust your levels. You could have command J that and put that on its own layer as well. Sometimes I do that. So you mess with your levels here a little bit. Press OK. So we have that saved. Um, I have also um, done this box where you go back here and select the box. And then you do an invert. Select inverse. Then you can do a new layer or you can do levels again where you can adjust the levels on just the box around that. You could also create a new layer and do something completely different. Um, that's what I did. So now I have some difference. I could go in here then and bevel and emboss this. So it kind of stands out if I wanted to. Deselect. So now I have this, right? Now what we need to do is we need to put these all on one layer. So remember we do an option command shift E and we have this all in one layer. Pull that to the top here. And I can select all and control copy and then I can create a new layer, a new document. Press OK. I can paste that in. Command T. Pull that up to five. I used my rulers at the top and hit enter. Now I can Command J. And I'm going to show you how to alter that. I guess I made that too big actually. And do one more time. Now I have three. Now I can inverse this. So now I have the opposite colors, the inversed colors. Um, I can go up to the top one and I can inverse this again. And then I can levels this one and adjust the color that way. I can play with just the, the channels and adjust colors. Um, there's a lot of different ways to play with that. You could have also just duplicated the um, this layer right here, this one, and done different things with that um, within your um, new selection. There's lots of different ways. Um, just because you're doing a geometric thing doesn't mean you have to do something like this. You can be inspired from anything that you find on the internet. Remember the key is making it your own and making it different and making it something that um, you want to look at. Um, so that concludes my geometric, uh, very simplified way of creating geometric up art.